No, that's okay, Steve. I think we should just do a normal one hour and 18 minute long episode. But we have so much card. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. And I'm Steven. This is 60 Cycle Hum, the guitar buying, selling, trading, modding, fixing, breaking, reviewing, playing podcast. podcast. This first ad was sent to us by Justin Jalowski. Jalowski? Joel Kowski. Joel Kowski? Please message us before purchasing. This incredible guitar is made of resin and piano keys. The piano key resin guitar features piano keys taken from a 1918 Karn upright piano. The keys are locked in clear translucent resin. The knobs are also takes uh, are also takes from the piano. Stratocaster single coils, black goto hardtail bridge, maple neck, Indian rosewood fretboard. Oh, okay. This is different. I because I saw somebody making this a guitar from a piano, but I don't think this it's is like this it. same exact concept, but a different one. So yeah. yeah, there's one that like went like viral Vi- or something. That's the one recently. I was thinking of. Yeah, and this is not that one, but it's the exact same concept, which makes me think that maybe it's the same person, or maybe the person that made the viral one saw this one, or vice versa. Well, this is at Geppetto's. Okay, in in Texas. So maybe it's just a different try from the same builder. Yeah, I'm not. I don't know who made the other one. Either do I. Here, you talk about it, and I'll see if I but, can uh, track down details. This is basically a stratish shaped body back routed uh strat setup single coils hard tail it's kind uh, of an offset body yeah yeah it's, I, it, I you want to say stratty when you first look at it but then you really look at it and it's almost got like this uh dan electro ho daddy sort of yeah, thing going on yeah i was gonna say that the horns for some reason give me i think not the horn balance because the horn balance isn't right but the the horn shape gives me a lead fender lead so the one that's been all over our feeds is this telecaster shaped one. Oh, is it but it's that that looks like is it looks that from it, geppettos uh i'm gonna find out this is on reddit so let's find out who the uh, yep it's from geppettos oh cool yeah so same builder same sort of thing going on here it's probably came from the same piano <laughs> as far as yeah. we know They're it's like, a cool concept yeah, it's fun. Uh, the the Telecaster one that's been all over, the keys are on the top. And then the one mm. we're looking at right now, this offset guy, the keys are on the bottom. Which do you prefer, Steve? I think I prefer the keys on top because it implies like... That you could... You could do... Tickle a, those ivories you while you're playing. You could do a thing where if you dialed in like the right sort of like boomy clean tone, you could do like one hand tapping and pretend you're playing the piano. <laughs> It would, I'm glad you said it would look so sick. Pretend because <laughs> I needed. I didn't want to have to correct you and say, you know, Steve, you can't actually play this. It's under resin. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like you can, yeah, like, yeah. Like there are certain tones you can get on a guitar under very specific like compression and everything else that almost sounds like piano. I think I prefer. I I do prefer the keys on top, like we're saying. Mm-hmm. I think that's a better look. But I think I prefer this offset shape over the Telecaster because when you look at the te- like a Telecaster shape, it's like uh, this could have been any. Yeah, time. it could just yeah, be knocked fair. out from a template where this offset yeah. thing looks like it's a bit more unique. Uh, then I I don't see any good shots of the neck on the Tele on the headstock. Anyways, the the headstock on the uh, the offset one. It's hard to tell the quality of it's this. It's pretty uninspiring. Right. Like I the, mean, it's Geppetto, so I, I, I it's probably good. trust that they are making good good stuff. I'm just saying, like, the neck itself is pretty... It's kind of a letdown, to be honest. Yeah, the, the headstock is is underwhelming. Uh, I do want to least. say, Ryan, you know mm-hmm. you need to take a screenshot of that and put it on the drive. No, I don't. <laughs> because I will be able to find that with a simple Google search. Okay. This is not like somebody complained that in a recent episode, uh, I took screenshots and put them on drive, but they somehow did not make it into the episode. It's probably because I, I didn't actually listen as I was editing and do what I was supposed to do. So I told them, Hey, I did my part. And if you click on the Imgur link, it's there. There you go. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I 
wonder what it was for. Don't don't tell me. I don't it's actually. For the, want, no, I don't actually wonder that much. Stop. <laughs> so let's let's critique this concept a little bit. Uh, this is uh, it's a it's a combination of uh, internal guts of a piano yeah. and the piano keys itself, mm-hmm. and then it's all floating in resin, which is a popular way to do themed guitars these days. I really really like the idea of repurposing the guts of a piano into a guitar body. Right. And aesthetically, this is doing it. This is giving you a lot, but tonally, this is just, you're, you're playing a resin guitar. Tonally, this is just going to be an epoxy guitar. Like, I don't know what the parts of a piano are called. Like all the parts that are connected to the keys, the, 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 the wooden beams that come off the keys. Like there's a compelling look to that, that old dark wood, that came out of a piano and it's stained by age and sweat and condensation and time and just the era that it came out of. I just want to see that wood sandwiched together and glued into a traditional wood guitar body. Like, leave the keys out. Like, I don't care. Like, So you just want to use all the wood yeah. but not do the resin there's, thing. There's a lot of people who have, you know, all sorts of theories about, you know, like if, if, a piece of wood or other material resonates at a musical vibration Mm -hmm. long enough than it imparts. uh, It realigns the molecule so it can more easily vibrate at those, you know, resonances. Right. Crystal, crystal lettuce and whatever. Crystal lettuces uh, (laughs) so that your, your notes can romaine for longer. (laughs) That 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 was was pretty good. (laughs) Did you just think of that? I just did. That just came out. That just came out right here. My brain. That, that (laughs) reminds me not to get off top. Oh shit. I wanted to do something. What's going on, Steve? I wanted wanted to do something at the beginning of the episode and I forgot, but maybe I'll try to remember for next time. Um, I mean, we're just at the tip of the iceberg as far as lettuce bird puns go. Oh my gosh. Here's what I want to know is just get that like butter tone. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So anyways, yeah, I, I, yeah, there's all sorts of wood inside of pianos and I'd love to see that harvested and turned into a guitar body in a less obvious way, but more of like a tone experiment materials experiment sort of direction right. like this this is fantastic like these these are stunning and wonderful guitars to look at i think you know the whole ivory keys whatever like piano look is fine but arguably uh, i would like to see this concept done with a uh, harpsichord so the, the black and white are inverted okay all right that would be cool or like someone did it with like an like old electric piano like a yeah. Rhodes or something yeah. like that Do those have inverted keys too uh don't some of them have like red and black keys? oh probably yeah i don't know you know you got to get that you tell me that tone roads tone roads parts built into right. your guitar right yeah and now Someone's got to build a upright or a baby grand piano out of guitars. Mm-hmm. You know, we got to have some tit for tat here. You can't just go you know, like scrapping pianos to make guitars without scrapping some guitars to make pianos. Like, you, so you have to you have to bring balance to the force. So, piano, I suppose, like arguably, like this is a conversation. I remember, like this is one of those like facts that you would throw out when you were in like your, your teens to make people think you were like really smart at music that are pe- you going to say that piano is a percussion, piano's instrument? A percussion okay. instrument. Uh, but what I'm going to get at is if you, if you were to play this, what was that thing? Like the triller, Right, right, right. You, we had that you had that you could like hit the strings. Yeah. If you played this with one of those, does this by ship of thesis rules become a piano? <laughs> like it's not if, right. It's made from piano parts. If you don't fret it, but then you hit it with a with a, a mallet. Yeah, is it a, is it, is it still, a piano? Is again? it still a piano or is it a guitar? Right, it's a dulcimer. Deep thought with Jack it's not, Handy. It's not that deep. <laughs> it's not. You're right. <laughs> what do you think is the uh, the cabbage of that wood? <laughs> Oh my God. That's a completely different family of vegetation i know it's in the produce department it's got leaves <laughs> oh man i don't care what you think steve <laughs> oh man why 
are. This is so stupid. I think we need to leave. <laughs> None of this is funny. Leave this pun behind. Uh, let us move this, on to something else. Yeah, this is thirty two hundred dollars. <laughs> uh, Why are we so full of lettuce puns? I just I can't elope wait to get to the next ad. Uh, that was a stretch. I, yeah, I admit that one was a stretch. Mm, I radish this time we spent together, Steve. <laughs> I was trying to figure out how to put radish into something. <laughs> okay, so they want uh, they want like three thousand dollars for this, right? Yeah, thirty two hundred plus a hundred dollars shipping. I mean, what's the value of a piano these days? Don't they give them away for free? I feel Pretty like we're much. getting ripped off here. You go you go to any you know old Southern Baptist church, and they're going to have fifteen pianos that have been donated over the years, and they don't know what to do with them, but they feel guilty getting rid of them. So pianos are free. You just just go get a, p- a free piano from a Southern Baptist church, and you can and cut like, it up and make make one yourself. Make it, one yourself. Let's see. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> I think you're counting too many. There's like 30 keys here. So from any piano, you can make like two and a half guitars. Yeah, yeah, totally. So you buy a piano, you've got two and a half guitars there. What is that? $10,000? Yeah. $8,000? Pretty much. $8,000. $8,000 just sitting there waiting for, for it to be turned into a guitar. You can go to a Southern Baptist church and get it for free and flip it into $8,000 overnight. All you got to do is go down to Home Depot and get a bucket of uh, epoxy. Yeah, you know, piece of cake. It's easy. Just put all, just squish everything together and go pour that <laughs> stuff on there, and you're done. Yeah, piece of cake. Yeah, just give it a couple stirs and pour it on. You're yeah. all set. Yeah, yeah. I like this idea. I, all these resin, like crafty resin builds, are always expensive, no matter who you get them from. So I can't say the price is bad. It's just you know, it's priced. It's priced outside of where I would be interested, but it's also already a thing that to me is more art than guitar. I'm sure. I'm sure it's very, I'm sure it's playable. Right. Like it looks playable. Oh yeah. It's probably a lot of fun. I'm just not interested in, you know, taking this out on stage at any time. You know what I really like about it? That cause I, you know, I've been on so many stages in the last Steve's two always years, all over stages all the time. I really like the switch placement. It's right in that yeah. middle, uh, uh, sharp key there or yeah. flat key. Is that a sharp key or a flat key? That's a good Who question, Steve. Depends on what key you're playing in. Right, right. <laughs> but I'll, I really like that placement. I think that's clever. I think that was a smart way of hiding a, a deeper route yeah. that they would need for the and, switch. And they did have to do some like some clever uh, things with this because like the hammers or whatever aren't straight. So there is one spot where it's just yeah. all resin all the way through. I like that. I think that's neat. Uh, you can kind of see that on the back too. It's a little more visible. Some of the areas where the keys don't quite sit next to each other as cleanly as, as you also might want. The back makes my point. Like, look at all that cool striping from yeah. that wood and the holes throughout it and stuff. Like, I just want to see it glued up to be a, a body blank. That's not encapsulated in resin like that. Right. You know, I think there, I think there's some, like all those holes, you'd have to dowel them up or, or something like that. But I, th- I think there's something really attractive about that wood in like an old like hardwood floor sort of way, mm-hmm. and the 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 direction of the lines, the way that they they shift an angle, and it's like a ten degree angle shift right there. Yeah, like two thirds of the way through. I think it's just a really cool look, and I wouldn't mind seeing a guitar just made out of those bits of wood. Yeah, cool build. I like looking at it. I like talking about it. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, that's all I got. Me too. Ryan, I don't know what you did last week. Uh, are you about to accuse me of something? I'm, Sounds like you're I'm winding a, up for something. I don't know if I'm accusing you, if I'm accusing me, uh, but... Someone's getting accused. Somebody's getting accused of having a really good Patreon pitch. What? Uh, because It was probably me. Because in the, since the last time we recorded, which was about two weeks ago, we picked up a bunch of patrons, most of which we picked up in like the last four days, which wow. is since the last episode aired. What happened? I don't know. What don't did we know. do? Tell us what we did right. Um, but we'll do it again. Of course, we'll add all these names to the scroll at the end. Uh, some of y'all will be, be getting added on to the list of people that I need to send packages to, which I will hopefully do. Didn't you get a bunch of stickers soon. and pics recently? Um, 
Why am I having so much trouble I with my hair? I do have some some not stickers picks. Did I get stickers and picks? You did get stickers. You got the the tuna time stickers and stuff. Oh yeah, I'll send out yeah. a bunch of those stickers. I did buy more of our. I was thinking of like stuff that wasn't ours. Okay. Uh, but I want to thank all you folks by giving you a little shout out here at the one dollar level. Kevin Esco, Sid Walter, Bone Grinder, the Bone Grinder, John Kelly, Ant Prutch, uh, James Barth. At the $5 level, uh, Lisa Potts, Elthrin, Not Sure, and Captain America himself, Chris Evans. Interestingly wow. enough, Captain America is subscribed to our Patreon and is paying uh, using British pounds. So I'm a little, he must be living with Captain Carter. Sure, they're living, a, living abroad, um, you know, expat over there, yeah. living his life out, the, his fi- the final years of his Captain America life. And he's, then, a, he's a senior citizen now because he yeah. went back in time, according to the movie. You know, when you think about it, like, is Captain America kind of a depressing tale? Like, he was a captain for, like, like 70 years, 80 years. <laughs> but he was frozen for most of that. That's true. That's true. Uh, but you would think at some but he was a captain when he got frozen, and he's still a captain. You'd think at some point he'd just, like... Yeah, we, at least become like is captain lower than what he could I, be I feel like he could have been colonel america climbing the ranks you know eventually be admiral america general america just general america <laughs> if he screws it up they'll be like you're private america now oh, right right uh and at the ten dollar level brandon cornwell nicholas stabile and wayne thanks wayne thanks wayne Party on, Wayne. Round of applause for everyone who joined. We really appreciate it. Uh, we, we spend Patreon money all the time to do all sorts of stuff that we need to do to make the show run. Wow. I actually invested in all new SD cards for us this week. Nice. Uh, we've been running out of time on the cards that we have been using Holy for the podcast. The audio can go 17 hours? I know. That's not even a new card. The, the audio is a lot smaller than video. The video card was running out on us yeah. uh, previously, and we are having to rush through. So I went and got a much, much bigger card. Now we can podcast in here for five hours and 39 minutes or something like that. It's stupid. Yeah. It's silly how long we can podcast now. Are you guys ready for three hour long podcasts from us? Here's the problem is now, it's coming. now that you put it out there that it's possible, people are going to be <laughs> they're like, they're going to demand, they're going to w- be like, hey, for, you know, your 600th episode, you should record a 600-minute episode. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but That's we, more than five hours. We use those funds to pay for all sorts of stuff. We picked up stuff from the UPS box today. We pay for the yeah, UPS for box, the box with Patreon money. That's what, like 30 bucks a month? Yeah, we pay for shipping stuff. We fund the Adventurers Club yeah. with Patreon funds. So, you, you know, the Patreons really do make a lot of the fun stuff that we do possible and we really can't thank them enough. So thank Patreon down in the comment section today to let them know that they are appreciated. You know, if we really appreciate these people, we should move on the show on with the show yes. and thank Chase Bliss, who also sponsors the show. Yes, thank Thanks you, Chase, Chase Bliss. Bliss. Yeah, there's gonna uh, be new stuff coming out from Chase Bliss. I mean, d- whenever you're watching this, like you could be watching this a thousand years in the future. I can almost guarantee you Chase Bliss will still be coming out with new products. So make sure, historians of the future, make sure you get on the mailing list for Chase Bliss Audio so you can find out what's coming out next. Damn, that, that was a good. good. Pitch? Yeah. Is that a good pitch? That was pretty good. Oh, we both that got, was pretty good. I got goosebumps. Do you have, goose, do you have goosebumps? I, do, I don't because I, don't, I just don't get them. Uh, you this, don't get them? That's not true. It's, I'm just not cold. I'm not cold enough. I'm not cold. Uh, I'm excited. That was this, a good pitch. It, this felt, next, it felt so smooth. This next ad was sent by Dave Santander. For sale is a heavily modified 2017 Fender Duo Sonic. I am the original owner and completed these modifications myself. The original white pit guard was replaced with a new three ply mint green pit guard. The body and pit guard were painted with a wildflower pattern on the front and back in metallic champagne pink. The hardtail bridge has been replaced with the Telecaster bridge and Telecaster single coil pickup, which is paired with a dynamic. What the fuck? I have not looked at the pictures yet. Oh, you yet. haven't looked at the pictures yet. The neck with a dynamic <laughs> fender vibrato. I don't understand that at all. Those are words that do not make sense in my yeah. head. The neck and middle pickups are original. What? It's a tele... No, okay, it's a duosonic. So I, I guess it can have three pickups. You're going to see it soon. The With the middle pickup being what was originally installed in the bridge position. Mounted underneath the pit guard, not visible unless pit guard is removed. Glued... But, between the neck pickup and the middle pickup is a piezo pickup, which can be turned of on course. 
or off via the small switch located next to the three-way toggle switch that controls the neck, middle, and bridge pickups. The piezo pickup acts as a feedback generator and can be a very cool tool when paired with effects in creating temporary feedback or sound. Because it, I don't think it would work as a the way like an acoustic pickup it wouldn't work no, it way. wouldn't it wouldn't sound normal but well, it, it would just work wouldn't, it wouldn't work it needs pressure all right all right i'm pretty sure okay you don't think there's enough pressure coming from the body there's zero pressure all right all right i think that covers all of it no cases included all other parts original message me with any questions okay that's <laughs> there it is <laughs> is that what you were imagining steve not at all. There's a lot going on here. Okay, that okay, that kind of cuz I'm think I was thinking that uh I was thinking that there would be string through. So did, is this a modified bridge or is this one of those cuz I know some of the bridges this is like a Bigsby adapting bridge. Uh I have a feeling this is modified. It does modified. It looks like they attacked it with an angle grinder with a few pixels mm, that I okay. can see here, which is a common thing to do. Like I saw I've seen people do that mod to oh, a regular right. Duosonic bridge to fit a big speed behind it. Um, look at how gentle that brake angle is across those saddles. That is a gentle, gentle brake angle. Also, look at the gap. Or like, there's a lot that I like about this. Like he really, they, they really went for it with this build, with this oh, modification. Yeah. Okay. Like they, they didn't hold back and there's a lot that I like. I actually really like the stenciled wildflower thing. Yeah. Like it that works. Looks cool. I like the, I like this pickup combination. I think that's really Yeah, fun. I don't hate that either. A Telecaster bridge pickup on a Duosonic and then a middle and a neck with your Duosonic pickups. Cool. I even like the piezo thing. Like I want to hear that. I want to hear a Duosonic with a feedback option like yeah, that. I, so I think, so what I was getting at earlier is I think in this case, the piezo, it's just going to like rumble. Sure. Which I, you know, so I think that's kind of the point. But what I'm saying is when you have it on like an acoustic guitar, it sits right under the saddle. Okay. And that's the down pressure. And that's why everything still maintains articulation. Okay. But in this case, I don't think you would have any articulation. Gotcha. You just have like this vague. I think that's why it just all it does is feedback. All right. Um, it's just going to wobble in, inside of whatever cavity it's in. Part of me is like, dude, you've done it. You've built yourself your ultimate guitar. After all this, why would you sell it? <laughs> You know, like, this is clearly a hyper-personalized guitar. Yeah, it's $1,000. This, was, this wasn't built, which is a ridiculous price, by the way, uh, which it's, it wasn't built for anyone but you, so why are you trying to sell it? Uh, a, a couple criticisms that, that I would express if I was holding this thing, like, I can just imagine how this is working. Uh, the dynamic vibrato, the Mustang vibrato on this is essentially fenders floyd rose it is an extremely right. wide range like make your strings floppy if you want to vibrato it's got to be set up just right with the right style bridge or tuning stability is a chore with these things string sliding across telecaster saddles like that i can't imagine that this is going to work out and be anything other than a, a noise dive bomber and maybe that's what he built it to be, is to be a noise dive bomber that's very expressive with uh, the the vibrato there. But if you're looking for tuning stability with vibrato, this I can't imagine that this guitar has it. I just can't. Also, I think it's neat to have a lot of string behind the bridge like that. Mm -hmm. But I think it would have just been better to do a full Mustang bridge mod on this and just put the vibrato where it's supposed to be. You are already right. routing up the body. Just put the vibrato where, where it's supposed to be and put a Mustang bridge on it so it can have that tuning stability. And then you Instead could... Instead of the Telecaster bridge? Right. I, know, I get that there's a cool factor of that, you know, that, that ashtray uh, Telecaster bridge plate. But, I mean, like... I'm looking at this as a potential surf guitar because I look at everything as a potential surf guitar. Right. And I just can't imagine tuning stability with this setup. Also, like I mentioned, that brake angle across those saddles is so, so, so slight. 
I would shim the crap out of that neck to get more of an angle across that. Like I'd love to, to do a Sonic like this that was loaded out with a Mustang vibrato. Like I think that would be a really fun, like kind of cheeky thing to do. And I love the look of this. This like I had one of these. Remember when I had one of these do a Sonics for a minute? Yeah. And then they had to return it to Guitar Center because it came with all sorts of damage that was, they was didn't it, advertise. Right. Was it used when you bought it? It was used. But it was like more used than you expected. They've done something else here. They had some other bridge posts going on. It here. almost looks like they had tried to fit a um, a tunematic a tunematic or something. Maybe they were for the must. Maybe that's for the Mustang. Bridge. It looks too wide for the Mustang bridge. Mm. They, they doweled it for something at some point. What were they trying to do there? Maybe they, oh, um, you think maybe that they they put a tunematic stop bar post there and tried to do like a uh, a Godo, not Godo, uh, uh, a Goldo less trim. Oh, maybe. Because that, that would have worked there but it might not have been low enough. They were experimenting on this guitar for a while. Yeah. But yeah, what's what this poor guitar has seen some, seen some Aren't things. These things like in the four hundreds. I think so. Maybe I was saying between four and six, but I haven't in, in new condition, obviously yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah. So um, I've gotten... I'm seeing, I'm seeing brand new for 800. For various Duos Sonics. Oh, here's one used Guitar Center that was the Humbucker model one that I had uh, for 474. So that's essentially what this should be priced at. Is, I mean, that's what it should be priced at in its in its stock condition. Mm-hmm. Is it's. I could see this selling for equivalent of like new price. You could probably argue the mods. The mods are weird. They're not the they're. Some of them are like look very clean. Other ones, like, look at this dowel job. It looks like there's like fifteen toothpicks shoved in there. <laughs> it does. That's so. So that's so that's like one example. Also, like, why is your all of your copper tape showing? Right there, there's there's some real charming elements to this, but there's also some loose gritty elements going on that. Uh, this is the Duo Sonic that don't sell it well. This was probably the Duo Sonic HS model. I'm guessing no, because it's got the two singles. I think it was the double single model. Mm, you don't really. They, they were you think it's guitars. the double single model? Well, look, it's got. They, he pulled. He oh, moved the single to the middle yeah, position. Okay, you're right. You're right. You're right. Unless unless he bought an aftermarket one to throw in. No, there. let's let's assume that that would make sense. Um. I was just trying to f- see if there was any version of this that had like a different bridge that wouldn't have I, necessitated those holes, but I don't see one. I like the idea of using the dy- dynamic vibrato as a behind the bridge standalone vibrato mm. instead of being a vibrato and bridge uh, combo. Like placing it like a jazz master trim. I like that idea. I just, it could have been, there are elements of this that could have been more cleanly executed that I think maybe it would be harder to make an argument against this being a thousand dollars. Again, I'm thinking, I'm still thinking like four fifty tops. I mean, in the four hundred dollar range, somewhere around there, someone who's a uh, you know one of you freaky noise artists out there is going to look at this and be like, yeah. yeah. Is this the, is this is what I like. This is what I want to mess with. This is going to be the tool for my sonic exploration. Is the vibrato off center? Is that it's just hard the to camera tell. angles? It, 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 the camera angles could play all sorts of havoc on trying to figure that out. It might be. It might not be. But also, I don't, I wouldn't worry about it. I that's can't. A, that's I, the least of our worries right again, now. Again, I cannot get past this copper tape. It's just so distracting i know i know and of all the places to shield <laughs> right <laughs> yeah it's really important to shield that part right there you know the part that has a giant metal plate over it <laughs> it's a little bit redundant 
Well, yeah, that, I, that was fun. I'm, I'm <laughs> curious. That's all I got I'm, to say about that. I, I like the stenciling. Like, that's going to stick in my mind. Like, I like that uh, that rose uh, gold over the sea chrome green sort of look. Sea chrome? That's what I call the the the, the metallic on my oh, uh, okay. Ampro 2 Jazz Master. This isn't the same as that. It's like surf pearl or, or whatever. Right. But I and the way it just softly goes over the pit guard and stuff, and it goes in and out of focus. Yeah. Like I think yeah. there's there's something really charming about that. It me also like means it. you could never replace the pit guard. <laughs> well, you can. You just will. You'll lose that. I mean, it would frame. be so hard to replace this pit guard anyway because you'd have to have it custom cut. Right. Right. So you're, you're never going to replace this unless you take the. I mean, someone could buy this and attempt to return it to stock. Uh, it looks like there's still right. plenty. There's still plenty of wood where the bridge is supposed to go. You mm -hmm. could put a completely different bridge here. You could do what I was saying and and put a Mustang style bridge where it needs to be for this to operate. You could just buy a couple boxes of toothpicks and fill up any holes. Yeah, that need it, to be filled. <laughs> just like a fistful of toothpicks and just jam them into any hole. Don't jam the backside of a toothpick ever. You're just going to stab yourself. But if you do like 10 at a time, it's going to be like a bed of nails sort of situation where it's, they're not yeah, going to poke into you. All right. Yeah, that's fair. That's <laughs> what fair. if it's not toothpicks? What if it's matchsticks? <laughs> and it's just waiting to get lit. What if they're matchsticks and the only th then all, all of a sudden all you can that's the only song you can play. Here here's here's what I want to say about this. My final thoughts on this guitar. Okay. I don't want to buy this guitar. Good. I don't want to own this guitar. I don't know if other people should. That's for them to figure out. But if I knew that a band was going to be playing at the Tower Bar, Casbah, Shea Cafe, wherever, uh -huh. a band was going to be playing and they were going to be using this guitar, I'd go just to see them use this guitar. All right. Really, I want to hear the sounds that are going to come out of this guitar. So there you go. That's a good thought. Yeah. What's next, Steve? What's next is what's new. Do you have anything what's new before we get to the mail? I'm really excited about this mail. I'm still trying to figure out my mannequin situation. <laughs> I People keep throwing money at your stupid GoFundMe. And I've spent it. Uh, <laughs> I I haven't talked about it on the podcast yet because it happened just after right. our last recording session. Um and, you know, most people watching the channel are already up on it because I published a video begging for yeah. money. Um <laughs> which I'm hoping to record and publish tomorrow. Um the, on our calendar, not on you, the viewers' calendar. Um I got tagged in a video on TikTok where this girl who is apparently a, a, a ghost hunter, a paranormal investigator mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for a Hulu show. So she's got a TikTok account and she posts this video of doing like a walkthrough of this like uh, kind of like consignment antique store thing in yeah. Phoenix, Arizona. And her camera passes by this mannequin for what? Two, three seconds. Yeah. At most. And it looks exactly like me, yeah. like insane levels of looking exactly like me. Only it's naked and wearing a blue cape. <laughs> when you first posted it, legitimately, I thought that like it was just me. That like Suzanne was was like had like taken a picture of you and was like messing with color gradients. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Like it's it's uncanny. So I did a I did like a stitch of that or a duet of that video, yeah. and. My video on TikTok featuring this mannequin that looks like me currently has 2.6 million views on it. Is that what it? it's up to? 2.6 million views. And how many subs did you get from it? Over a thousand. Oh, that's on TikTok. That's pretty atrocious, actually. Yeah, it's not but. great. <laughs> it's not a good. It's not a good ratio. <laughs> but also, like, I mean, that's the nature of short form content. Yeah, yeah. In general. The vast majority of of those subscriptions too, of the subscribers, uh -huh. are people who are not going to care about right anything else I do. <laughs> but. I am a lot closer to hitting that monetization point on TikTok. So, anyways, the plan right now is that I'm raising money through GoFundMe mm -hmm. uh, to go buy it. It's in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm in San Diego, as many of you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, my wife and I are planning on doing an overnight trip, like a <laughs> uh, a road trip. We're gonna we're gonna drop the kids off at school. Right. We're gonna hit the road right away. Uh, my parents and my sister will take care of picking up the kids and keeping them for a night. So we'll, we'll head to Phoenix. We'll buy the damn thing. 
I'm hoping that we can meet up with uh, Philip Knight and his wife now, and do, you, do like a dinner does he, together. Does he know you're coming yet? Not yet. Not yet. He when probably I probably should plan. When I have the dates he's, figured out. He's I have a the very date, busy man. When I have the dates figured out, I'm going to pitch it to Phil. If he can't do it, it's not a big deal. You know, it's not a big right. deal. But if he can, it'd be lovely to hang out with Phil McKnight and his and his wonderful wife. She's she's a firecracker. I love yeah. hanging out with her. Um, so then we'll drive home the next day and get home. Uh, if everything goes to plan, just in time to pick up the kids from school. Oh, you're going to leave that early, huh? Uh, we'd have to leave at like 7 a.m. or something That's like that. That's pretty early. Yeah, it's not that early. Come on. Or maybe we'll sleep in and let my family pick them up again. That's what I would do. Yeah, it's probably a better plan. But I put a down payment on the mannequin. I, I raised like 450 bucks on GoFundMe already yeah. just from posting on TikTok about it and on Facebook or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I threw that money into a down payment. So now it won't get bought up from underneath me because this is a hot ticket item guys. <laughs> but I just, I felt nervous trying to make plans to go all the way there. This is so dumb without locking it in first. Sure. Like, what if I showed up? Because I, I called the shop, and the shop was like, oh, well, we can only save it same save it same day. And it's like, I don't know if I'm going to fly in or drive in yet. But they got right. me. They gave my phone number to the lady who runs that part. Like, it's, it's one of those stores where you rent space. Yeah. So she's yeah. renting a part of it. They passed on my phone number. Because there's like a bunch of mannequins. Uh, yeah. And and so she called me back, and she's like, oh, yeah, no problem. Do we'll do a deposit and I'll hold it until you can come out here. Cool. So she's pulled it from the shop and it's going to be at her house now. And so it's you're going to go in this lady's house and there, you're going to find out there's a dozen mannequins. mannequins they all look that like me. All look like you. <laughs> she's just making mannequins. And now that she has me in her house, she's going to capture me. Yeah. And, and Lauren's going to have to try to save me. What you'll find out is she made one originally and she's been using it to to like. <laughs> And the the original one is based on her husband who died like 60 years ago. And she's been using that one to capture other men who look like her husband. <laughs> it's just a honeypot. She's just sort trying, of. She's just trying to abduct men that remind her of her deceased it's husband. Like, yeah, it's like a honeypot, but like with zero, like, it's like not even on purpose. It's just like it's a, it's a OCD kind of right, thing. Right, right, right. Like she can't help but do yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. And then she can't help but skin the people who show up to buy the thing. Well, no, she petrifies them. That's she how they oh, become she mannequins. Ah, okay. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously. Obviously. It's Obviously. preservation. So other than that, you know, I'll, I'll put a link for the GoFundMe in the description if you guys want to support this. And by the way, no one should do this. No one has to do this. It, no, one is helped. no one is helped by this GoFundMe. It is a completely silly, frivolous, vapid expenditure of money. And if you want in... I'm giving you a way to be in on this nonsense. So the link is in the description if you want to help out. If we ran a go, could get the same level of success, we could run a, like a GoFundMe every month just to do to some to dumb like, thing. Just to supplement like the Patreon. <laughs> like we could probably do like, hey, you want to see this do this thing demoed? Here's a GoFundMe. We could, yeah. we could experiment yeah. with that. But then help. help. Help sixty cycle hum buy a clon. Help, help sixty cycle hum buy thousand dollar Gibson pickups to throw into a oh wood my chipper. Gosh. And then we have to do it. If we say we we're going to throw it into a yeah. wood chipper, we have to do it. Yeah. All right. So, so that's my what's new. Uh, we've got a community what's new on the floor down here. Do you want to grab that? Yeah. Unless you have a personal what's new you want to get I, into. I don't. My what's new is is I'm really excited about. This. All right. I'm excited about it too, Steve. I've been excited about it since I saw these things at Nam. And by these things, I mean apparel. We got a care package from Bee's Music Shop. Got to talk to Brian. He runs a shop in, I believe, Michigan. You may have seen them on social media because some of their stuff is kind of popular. Uh, because he is... Oh, my gosh. What are they saying? He send? is the cat shop. Here. Uh, yeah. Oh, my finger. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't know. I don't... Oh, I'll use this. It's a vinyl dust cover. Oh, dust cool. Cover There's a few a of these in of here. Dang, Jeez. Brian. What? Oh, my God. What is going on here? Oh, my God. How much stuff is, how much stuff did oh, they send? So, so I request, I, I only requested four things. A shirt for you and me. 
this this mug because I love the green. They're a green team mug. <laughs> this says picks all this over. This just said something, and I could tell it wasn't going to be chips. This says this one is one hundred. This one is definitely one hundred percent chips. <laughs> I love this. Hold on. <laughs> Oh, there's picks. There's picks. There's, there's, there are picks. They're spraying guitar picks all over the garage. <laughs> We're gonna have to collect all those picks. I'll send those. That's kind of Patreon stuff. Uh, there's these leather pick holders with the Bees Music Shop logo on it. I asked for this mug. Oh my god, they're in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. But because it's Bees Music theme, they're in Meount Pleasant, Michigan. These guys were were all over Nam taking video. And they, I, I feel like they made the best nail. They content. did. They they were nailing it. And w- we saw them at a party, and Steve was like, "Hey, what do we do about getting some shirts?" And I poked my head in. And I'm like, "Steve, get us some shirts. I want shirts from them." This is amazing. So let's show these shirts. This I'm might be the best these. best package we've ever gotten. Uh, <laughs> Why are there pedal boxes? The Bees Music Shop baseball I'm a, tee. I'm a lover of baseball tees, so I'm excited about these. Oh, they there's got, a, they got Reverend guitars. There's on a them card. Too. See what the card says. Oh, are these pint glasses. Oh, are they pint? Gla- I didn't even know they had pint glasses. And so, a, oh my a gosh, cat card. Look at how many stickers they sent. Oh Steve. my gosh, they're trying. They're, what they're trying to do is they're trying to <laughs> spam our. Uh, our Patreon. So it was a pleasure. To, a lot of it was a pleasure out. to meet you all. Take what you want and give the rest out. Until next time, love bees music shop. Thanks so much. That's this, a cat toy. That's, that's for me. Catnip, right? That's one of the things I actually asked for. Well, there's there's two of them here. Some, well, do you have, if you wanted some cat toys? I don't have, have cat cats. Toy. Well, maybe it's time to get one. No, <laughs> Henry is horribly allergic. Look, there's more in here, Steve. There's more catnip toys. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is nuts. <laughs> You guys, this is crazy. So I did not expect these at all. What? Uh, but I did mention some of these. Uh, oh, my gosh. <gasps> We're going to have to find a way to give why these away. Did, why did they send these pedals? Uh, we have two. Is that also a one-ton B? Yeah, I've always wanted to try one of these. It's got a cat face yeah, on it. It's the, it's the Bees Music Shop one-ton B. I remember when the Mojo Hand One Ton B came out, they had the most excellent demo. They had this incredible demo. It's it's a Fuzz Right clone. And the demo just makes it sound like everything I've ever wanted it's, from a Fuzz And it's the, B, the one ton B design, but with a cat head on I it. might not be able to give this one away, Steve. I well, might be holding on to this one. Well, there's three of them. So that's what I'm saying. We'll, we need to just find a way to give these away. Well, I'm going to have to try one first. Maybe you keep one, I keep one, and one. Are to, they are they one. all the the one ton B? There's three one ton Bs and then a Keeley Super Cat mod. I don't know if you've ever played the Super Cat mod. No. We'll have to get some like close up photos of this stuff for for the grand chunk range overdrive. So it's the su- these guys are a guitar shop, it's right? Keeley Super Fat mod, yeah. This is wild. So, um, they're do- whatever they're doing, they're doing it right. I'm in love with all of this. So I actually found out about them originally because Emily uh, Emily Harpist was doing all their cat, a lot of their cat theme stuff. Ah, because she's a cat lady. That's, that's just get so it out of cool. here. So much stuff. If you guys want to send us stuff, and you if you want to try to outdo them, here here's the mailing address. It's been up here for a while. Bees Music Shop. That's wild. Just thanks, went ridiculous on us so here. So much. I was I'm so I was excited. excited to get a shirt. I didn't know we yeah. were going to get all this other stuff. Yeah. Jeez. We're going to have to go pick up, collect all those picks so I can send them out, too. Yeah, good luck. They flew all over I the know. place. I know. Well, there's still a bunch in the box, so yeah. it's cool. My kids are going to love those snakes. I'm just, like, flabbergasted. Thanks so much. When I saw the box, I was like, why is it so big for shirts? Yeah. That, that's incredible. Look, link below. It's bees, beesmusicshop.com, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Oh, ridiculous. I'm so excited about these. Go check them out. Go. I'm pretty sure all of these like special design pedals too, they're the same price that you would buy them. Right. So if you're, they have a whole bunch, they're very specific. I talked to, I talked to them about it and I was like, how do you guys decide? And I I really love this. And this is, I think says a lot about 
the way our, the community works, right? I said, like, how do you guys come up with this cat stuff? Because a lot of them are all, like, they do the cat tana. They've done a bunch of stuff with right, Kaylee. Right, right. The cat tana. I think they do the cat presser, super cat mod. Uh, there's a there's a collaboration they did with um, uh, I forget what pedal it is, but it's with um, Btronics. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, they and they've done this with a bunch of companies, and I love it. And I talked to I was talking to them on Instagram, and I I just said like, how do you guys figure this out? Like, how do you do it? And and he was like he was like I don't want to do it with companies that are like. Yeah, we'll make like uh fifty of them, and like maybe that like whatever happens happens. Like he wants to work with companies that are like, yeah, this is rad, right? Like Let's just go, go for it, it. Like to him, it's not a public to to him and and to B's Music Shop, it's not a publicity stunt. It's part of their brand, and I I really and so they want to partner with other pedal companies that recognize like this isn't just like a jokey pedal, like it's. It's it's jokey, like it's fun. Yeah, yeah. It's it's jokey in that sense, but it's not like a stunt. Yeah, it's like let's offer a unique colorway. I love it. They have their own. They have the the blooms just came out from. If you want a blooms in that sparkle green, uh, you can get one from Bee's Music Shop if they still have them, which I believe they do. This is a three XL. I think I'm taking that one. Keep talking, Steve. Oh, I don't know what to say. I'm. They're, I'm, both, they're all three XLs. Oh, they're both three XLs. That's fine. We'll figure it out. You change it, Ryan's to. We're gonna. I'm gonna download this. We're gonna turn this part into the YouTube short. Uh, Ryan changing the shirt on camera. There you go. I don't you think I've ever worn a, worn a three XL before. I've got a couple. I've got one or two. I think. At Big home. boy. But yeah, I'm just like real. That's like a really cool partnership. Um. I don't want to get too much into this. I feel like we've done a lot of self promotion, um, but this is this is a, one of the things I've really been trying to find brands to do this with for a while. Is just for the giveaway stuff, giveaways for the giveaway stuff, or just promo on the show. I've said it. I've told this to a few brands at Nam. I go look for the cost of like five bucks. I can sell you. I can basically give you like eight to ten thousand impressions for five bucks. And they're like, what are you talking about? I go send us stickers. We'll shout you out. Yeah. That's it's not like the it's, it's not, not a long impression unless you send us this much stuff. They don't even need be, to wait for an invitation. It's be a they long could just, impression. They could just send it to the the uh to the the, the, the UPS <laughs> box here. I forgot how to talk. I'm yeah. so flabbergasted by uh, all this and stuff. Speaking of long impressions, uh <laughs> these strings are not coated with children's teeth. But they do come from String Joy, which means they were crafted in Nashville, Tennessee. Well, that's and a custom set, Steve. That's the way to pitch those. Device. These are customs. Uh, the eleven to fifty is custom. Well, this is this is like the Mike Adams set. This is the surf. Oh. This is the surf set right here. That's built out to be great for surf guitar stuff. Eleven to fifty. I forget what it is. Eleven, fourteen, eighteen p, twenty eight, thirty eight, and fifty. I like to use these on my offsety sorts of things. You can go over to String Joy dot com and use their custom string gauge builder to build whatever custom set you can dream up make weird stuff make creative stuff crazy string sets no one's ever used before go wild make a set with all a strings just all the same gauge all a strings all the way across your guitar you're going to have to get files to open up your nut slots but it's going to be worth it because you're going to be a-okay when you're playing with your all a strings guitar check out string joy use code h-u-m at checkout to save 10 percent. and if you use our link we'll get a little cut of that so help us out use our link go over to string joy buy some strings you're watching a guitar show you need strings just do it how was that pitch, Steve? Goosebumps? It was perfect because I already wrote 48 down and you ended <sighs> right before it flipped over to 49. Right on the money. Ryan, Aaron Abubo posed this question on our group and then somebody told asked us to talk about it. I don't know if you said knew who it was, uh, uh, but I it was forgot. in the group. Do you remember the Korg new tube? Of course I remember it. I owned one of the little amps that had a new tube you had in the it. Amp. Did you ever demo the Ibanez new tube tube screamer? No, I don't care about tube screamers. Okay. I don't know. I knew that was a that was a product. I think I might have checked it out at Hennings or something like that, oh, okay. or, or or the Nam booth or whatever. Yeah. Um, whatever happened to New Tube? That's I, the question. That's so, the clickbait of this whole episode. So Steve. we are going through the topic call out while we're eating dinner, and you asked that, and I was like, it, "Does New Tube still exist?" 
And I, I was like, and you were like, let's just well, talk about it. Well, I know it still exists. Like, they're still selling things with new tubes in it. Right. But, like, when it came out, it was, like, the promise of a new era of tube amps and tube right. products because they came up with a, a little tube component that's, like, this big, uses super low voltage compared to a regular tube. I think it tube. uses, like, 2% of the power of a tra- of a traditional tube. And lasts for, like, uh, 300,000 hours or something like that. Yeah. And so that sounds like exciting technology. It sounds like, like exciting audio, video signal processing technology Mm -hmm. to have a modern tube alternative that sounds like it's way more convenient in so many different ways. And other than what's happening with it at Vox, right. We're really not seeing anything happen. Yeah, They did the, the Korg overdrive, the new tube overdrive. That was like Mm -hmm. a $300 assemble it yourself kit that I think is now like been discounted down to like, under $200 uh, in all of the stores I could find it in. Um, the, all of those, their Vox makes a, four different like drive pedals yeah. that use it that I did not know came out three years ago. Well, I'm, I remember those coming out. Uh, I just, you know, they weren't, I wasn't interested yeah. in them. And then um, you had the MV50, right? From that. Yeah, yeah. Do yeah. you still have it? I don't. I, don't I returned it. it because it was in the early days where I was buying stuff right. to try out to make videos with. And it had that issue where I think when you plug it into a 16 ohm speaker, yeah. and then you turn yeah. it all the way up to like try to, you know, saturate that new tube, mm-hmm. it would short out. And right. then in, in retrospect, looking back, it's like, what was I even doing? It sounded great up until I turned it all the way up. I should have just kept it. Yeah. Well, and the issue there, like that's that's the design. It's probably, a cla- I'm 100% sure it's like a class D power supply. Sure, sure. They're all outfitted with, well, with yeah, overheat it, protection. It, 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 there are these little amp heads like this that sound yeah. great, but then they have a power brick that's like yeah. So it's <laughs> like kind, two hamburgers. It's kind of like very much like a user error there it's was, not user error, but it's it's like it's you trying to do something that is 100% not designed to do. Right, exactly. And so. it was, apparently is only an issue like on the 16 ohm output. Yeah, no, exactly. And if I had done it 8 ohm, it would have been fine. And it's because it's the it's the impedance mis- mismatch. Right, right, right. God, don't you know anything about solid state amps? I don't, Steve. Jesus. I really don't. But, but yeah, I thought that amp sounded great. Yeah. The new tube technology looks like extremely promising, but... When when it came out, I was like, I can't wait to see what the industry is going to mm-hmm, do with this. Mm-hmm. We don't know. We don't know the behind the scenes stuff. I'd love it yeah, if, if some yeah. some builders that are in the audience who might know would chime in in the comment section. Get down in the comment section. And let us know what you know about what's going on with this. Because I would have assumed like all sorts of like boutique builders, like pedal builders, amp builders, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm would have been all over these things. Like if they could get their hands on them, who wouldn't want to build all sorts of different pedals that have this integrated little tube thing in it. Yeah. Like I look at it like I, like I wish line six had these things and was like, say there was like a bank of five of them built into some sort of helix helix architecture, right? Like multi-effect something. And you got all, you got the option to route various different things through various different tube preamps throughout mm-hmm, your mm-hmm. signal path. Like that would be if, interesting. What if you could like have a, a multi-effect that was also a tube amp builder that utilized a selection of different new tubes that you, they, that the computer could throw different voltages at and different like yeah. signals yeah. at and things like that. I'm not a tube scientist. I don't know how this stuff works, but that's <laughs> where my, my imagination is going. Like I have to imagine this stuff is possible if, if I'm thinking that direction, not to mention like Walrus just came out with a tube fuzz, right? Like if they can produce these things in numbers and get them cheap enough, like there's all sorts of pedals that could have these things as, as tube components in pedals and fuzzes like the, a surfy bear could a surfy bear is a trace of a Fender 6 G 15 external reverb unit that originally has tubes in it, but then Surfy Bear replaced all the tubes with bifets. Right. What if they could go back to tubes? Yeah. But new yeah. tubes. Like, that would be amazing. Like, all there, 
it's just it seems like it's amazing technology and it's is it being beta maxed is it disappearing well and and you th- you know part of me thinks like well maybe the, the technology is expensive it's rotting on the vine but for some reason all four of those vox pedals are 130 dollars, right which means they're actually cheaper than like a boutique overdrive is right like right your typical boutique overdrive is probably 150 175 maybe maybe even more right so the technology doesn't seem like it's prohibitively expensive. And maybe builders out there have bought these pedals or bought that kit pedal so they can harvest a new tube and experiment with it. Yeah. And maybe they've discovered that it's a bummer of technology to work with for some reason, or like it just, it, there's not a payoff there, mm-hmm. or maybe they can't get them in the numbers that they would need to, to actually do what they want to do. Like maybe cord doesn't supply to small builders or something like that. Like whatever it is, Tell us in the comment section. I know that builders watch this show. Yeah. I know that they do. They always have, and they always will because they need stuff to listen to and watch while they're sitting there (laughs) soldering all day long. And for some reason they like us. So you had this idea. um, I I think maybe we can transition to it. Sure. Sure. How assuming that new tube is good technology, which it seems like it is. That that little lamp I had sounded great, and that was yeah. when I had an AC-15 to shoot it out against. Right. And I was Actually, like, it just sounds up, really close. I just scheduled that video to upload to Facebook. Oh, did so you? it might be up in the next week or so on Trip Facebook. Trip down memory lane. Yeah. I, I That's like a seven-year-old video at this point. I, I, uh, I had downloaded all the videos I was going to start uploading to Facebook, and I did it for like a month, and it is tough to keep up with that. Yeah. And so I just hit a br- a wall where I was like I couldn't do it anymore. Good news though, Steve. What we got our uh, we got our payment invoice for Meta from Facebook. Yeah, we made a whole dollar. Is last that month. from Instagram or from Facebook? Both. Wow. I know. I know uh, a whole dollar thanks to your so, efforts. So the so the thing with that right is. I stopped doing it, but I still had all the videos downloaded on my computer. <laughs> and I, I was like, why am I running out of hard drive space? Oh, yeah, I, realized I, I had like 50 gigs of videos <laughs> or like, ah, maybe not that. It was like probably 20 gigs of videos. But anyway, so uh, yeah, I saw that video. But again, I don't associate the Vox MV series. I saw Andy do a video not too long ago, uh, Guitar Ge- the Guitar Geek, mm-hmm. uh, and Snarky and our group has one, the Vox uh, Mini Super Beetle. I've yeah. heard those are really good amps. Those are they, they came out with a couple of head amps that were way expanded yeah. as far as use of the new tubes. And, and, and so stuff. those are all new tube things. They make a bunch of little combo amps that are new tube. Yeah. But I didn't know any of that stuff had new tube in it. Right. Because I forgot it existed. Yeah. All that being said... You had an idea to share with the okay, folks here, at home. Here's my idea. If it's even possible, uh, Korg, Vox, who, whoever's in charge over there, if you're listening, and if, if someone out there knows someone at those companies, send this video to them to get this information to them. Make, but tell them to watch the whole thing. The whole, th- we want From the, the beginning. We want the entire click, please. Uh <laughs> <laughs> No, they can start at 48 minutes and 58 seconds. I have to imagine that you have this commercially designed factory produced component that Korg is having manufactured in massive numbers to supply uh, various big industries. Like I, I, I have to imagine these things are being used in satellites and stuff like that and all sorts of industries that we don't know about. Like there, there's practical uses for new tubes that have nothing to do with the audio, I mean, audio we, industry. We did find some like non-instrument, like non-MI, sure, sure. like headphone amps. Yeah, yeah. So it seems like there's at least some hi-fi applications. And I, I know that companies of that size there's a combination of wanting to keep that tech close to your chest and only have it for your family of brands, mm-hmm. which is the beta maxing thing. Like you're going to kill it if you don't get it out to the rest of the world. And also I understand there's an element of, you know, it's not worth your corporate time to have someone filling orders that make no sense on the books where it's like, right. Oh, 2000 orders orders of this you know they want two thousand units but it doesn't make sense for us to ship less than half a million like details like that that i imagine are going on Mm -hmm. 
are the details that are going to keep this from becoming a ubiquitous technology in this scene. And it's never going to be a huge moneymaker because this is such a niche. I know. I know. Like maybe you're selling these things to be part of medical supplies or something like that, and you're making money hand over fist. But if you want the guitar world, the audio world to embrace this technology and have it have this audio legacy that you seem to be positioning it for within your own family of brands, you have to make it available to the creative builders, to the tastemakers, to mm -hmm. the Robert Keeleys, the Josh Scotts, the Brian Womplers, the Analog Mike, et cetera, et cetera. Like the people who are out there in the trenches making a hundred pedals at, at a time, exploring and experimenting with circuits and seeing what they can do with things. You have to, you have to provide orders at prices that make sense to those builders. And like my, my big idea that I pitched to Steve is Korg should just take 10 cardboard boxes. So they should throw a thousand new tubes in each box and should just ship it to these people and just say, Hey, Use them or don't if you want to experiment with these. Right. If you want to try to figure out sounds that work with these or products that work with these or design new products around with them, like go wild, do what mm -hmm. you want to do. And if if you like them, if you want to continue, like, you know, there's a contact on the bottom of the order sheet that's, yeah. that's in the box. Like get them out to the tastemakers. Get them out to the people who prototype and breadboard and get creative. Pick a couple really, really small builders that are doing weird things. Send one to Chase. Send a box to Chase Bliss. See what they do I with it. I think they're too big. You think Chase Bliss is too big? No, I think the chip is too big. Well, they <laughs> no, they could put it in one Automaton? of the automatones or yeah, something like yeah. that. Like, there's all sorts of builders out there that I think could do really cool stuff with mm -hmm, this. Just mm -hmm. send them the, give them a taste. And maybe this has already happened. I don't know. Maybe maybe there will be builders in the comment section saying like, yeah, I tried it. It doesn't work or it's not cool sure. or it's too expensive or whatever. But what I imagine is happening could be fixed by that sort of idea. Like just send them out and, you know, first one's free. Get them hooked. Yeah. Drug dealer yeah. math, you know, like. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Yeah, just put some, uh, put some. Uh, I don't know. I was gonna make a Halloween, but like show. you know, like a small, a, a small builder or even like a medium sized builder. Yeah, yeah, they could make if they if they came up with a circuit that they thought was marketable, they could they could sell a hundred of them as a short run mm -hmm. and just test the market and get some buzz going. Yeah, like that's how you get buzz going. And you want buzz on this sort of stuff because it seems like it's cool tech. So and, if, and honestly, like if I think if you, if the tech is good and the designs are good in the long run, that drives not just boosting the new tube business because if a, you know, a builder say like, instead of the germanium tum tumness, it was the new tube tumness, but now you don't build a thousand of them and then have a, another 5,000 angry fans, right? You know, because there's, basically as far as we can tell a near limitless supply of these these new tubes at this point i mean also so now you're going to get a, a you know a, every six months your korg is going to get a new order for these from brian wampler right right and that's going to drive traffic back to like hey i really like the new tube tumness what's this new tube stuff all about it's going to drive traffic back to the vox pedals or it, they maybe they don't sell directly to the builders maybe they they sell to an electronic supply shop that mm -hmm. fulfills orders for all these small builders and whatnot. Sure. Um, I want to see it happen. Like I want to see Fender come out with new tube Princeton's, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. I want to see a new tube Marshall head. I want to see a new tube, uh, 5150. Like there, there's practical applications here because those little, those little MV heads, like I said, I had an AC 15 and when I plugged the MV, uh, AC or whatever it was. Yeah, MV50. MV50, direct into its speaker so that they use the same speaker. I was like, these sound pretty much identical. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's it sound, they sound so close. It's not even worth comparing once you run it through the same speaker. Mm -hmm. like, imagine if any any amp out there, instead of old school tubes that, you know, the, the future of, is really shaky. Sure. And it's expensive to work with. And, you know, you know, they're not as reliable as modern technology and stuff like that. 
what if someone could have you know a twin reverb that was powered by new tubes and weighed a lot less but sounded so so close like what if there instead of tone masters there were new tube fender amps just something to think about i don't know and I, i'm really looking forward to anyone who's in the know filling us in in the comment section like th this is your time to shine maybe it's behind the scenes information and you can't tell us but you, you never know any closing so a thoughts, single, Steve? Uh, I will say a single Korg new tube. You can buy them from DIY Audio Store, and DIY Audio Store is selling them for $50 a piece. So that is pretty expensive That's for a single component. A single component. But then how are they putting those into a $129 guitar pedal? It's because it's within the same company. So there's got to be some kind of bulk rate deal that, right. that, that can happen there. Right. I there, there, I would these think. things have to be... Like, most pedal components are cents. They're not dollars, they're cents. Yeah. Like the pla the place where the pedal pedal builders that I know like say like most of their money goes is into enclosures, input and output jacks and switches. You know how much a switch is? It's like 3 bucks. So that lets you know what the max like kind of component costs are in these things. So a $50 component mm -hmm. that's not doable for a pedal for most pedals, for most pedal builders. But you know it doesn't cost them 50 bucks to to cut a profit on that you know that's probably like a two dollar part and the numbers they produce them and if if you only need one in a pedal to do the thing like it could be a a pretty decent thing to do so there was a thread back in 2017 because i looked into it and it's interesting so i don't know, know if you how familiar you are with the brand metasonics i'm not uh they have some they're like an amp company and they did make, at least for the amp space, a comment that there are some engineering issues with it. Um, that it says basically comes down to it's not a bad idea. It just won't meet the typical high expectations of the market, which is probably maybe why you're seeing it more in pedals than you are in, in amps. Um, and then it says easy to predict what will happen to this. Idiot Guitars will ask, hey, man, is it like a 12AX7? They'll be told no. And the only sales will be for a few cork products which will probably tank because the tube thing is my, he says that they're microphonic. Now, again, this is in 2017. Uh, now, of course, there's also a comment there that like, uh, that these may have just been released to go up again, to like mess with EHX, which seems like a weird thing, but I don't know. It doesn't seem to be the case at this point. It seems like a, a lot of R and D just to mess with another company and then not yeah. do anything with it. Um, but and this is like, actually in a modular uh, synthesizer forum. Okay, so that that's with the with the mentality of like, is this a direct replacement for existing tubes? No, obviously it's not. Obviously, you would have to design new uh, new topology around yeah. these products because it's yeah. not a not a drop in replacement for existing tubes. You build new circuits around it, but I I fully believe that there's someone out there who's creative enough to do really cool, compelling stuff with this tech. And I just wondered what happened to it. Yeah. I think it's, again, I think it's a really interesting question. It is kind of odd to me that like, though, I guess if you buy five of them, you can buy five of them off of whatever new tube us stores on eBay and buy five of them for 200 bucks. So if a single one is 50 bucks and five of them is 200 bucks, then like, you got to figure like, okay, 10 it's of, a bag of potatoes rule, you know? Yeah. Like, it's like, basically there is some point where you could probably get these down to like under $20 a component, at which point it would be the most expensive, still the most expensive part in a pedal, but it starts becoming less prohibitive. If they could make it the same price as a, a regular vacuum tube, we'd be there. Yeah. You know, now I need, so, someone out there would spend the time trying to figure out like a Brian Wampler would sit down and breadboard with it for a week and try to figure out what it's useful for, you know, and maybe he already has. And he is in the comment section right now telling us why it sucks. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Last ad, Steve, or do we have other business? We have no other business, Ryan. This ad was just sent, talk about this ad. It was sent to us by a uh, friend of the show. Snarky. We already mentioned him this episode. Did we? Yeah. Oh, because he owns one of those amps. He has one of those amps. Yeah. This is the tag in the antique shop said ugly bass. At first glance, they were correct, but there's so much going on with this P bass kit model. 
I have a Saga P base that was made in Indonesia or Taiwan, and this is very similar to this ugly one. And there have been several companies that sold them under different names and slightly different headstock designs, but they are good basic products. I had so many questions about this base. What paint was, this is a reverb listing. Uh, what paint was used? What was the painting technique? Why? The paint scheme is everywhere, even on the back of the neck, which has a texture to it that you can feel. The bridge is a very de decent knockoff of the Leo Quan badass bridge, but it's a little too upscale to have been the standard model. What the heck is this pit guard that was repurposed to cover up the hole in the body that was intended for more pickups? Uh, some of the tuners are not original, but they are the same style and they work. The modifications I have done to it include installing a used of used set of cream P base pickups, recessing the neck plate. This is a custom touch that I've been doing on all of my bases for several years. When I bought ugly, I never thought it would be playable. It was just going to be wall art. I was shocked that not only uh, did it play well, but it sounds great. Reach out if you have questions. Neck is straight. Intonation spot on. Holds the tune. The tag that says ugly base 90 was on the base when I bought it eight years ago. Due to inflation, supply chain issues, and emotional <laughs> attachment, the today price is 165 I think the ugly tag should remain on the base. Well, it's listed it on reverb. It says that it has sold. It was listed at 145 plus 45 shipping uh, from Texas. Uh, he's not wrong. It is ugly. Also, the tag says it was $80. Yeah. Um, so this guy bought it for 80 bucks and then he, he flipped it. Apparently someone bought it or made, they made an offer or something. It, well, says it, zero, like, it says zero after it sounds, offers. It sounds like he had to put the. Uh, he did some upgrades to it. All the, right. All uh, right. Pickups and whatever on it. Yeah. Yeah. I. This is pretty ugly. It's pretty damn ugly. But like, I kind of like this square thing. Mm -hmm. I want to know how it was done. Like I'm, I'm assuming spray paint with like one of those chromy uh, uh, office light diffusers. That's a grid. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You put them up into the, the recessed lighting in offices. Like that's what it looks like to me, but I'm not totally sure how. Because some of them are solid squares and some of them are just lines. Like, I had... Was it dipped or was it like, or was it like, or oh, maybe he sprayed color, then put down the grid, and then sprayed dark color over it to get the. I I just I wish I could watch this happen, to what happened to make this waffle pattern, because I think it the the pattern itself is actually really cool. Yeah. I think the color yeah. choices are bad, not bad but murky. Like it, it looks like like a kind of like dingy painting of a cityscape mm -hmm. sort of, but imagine if this was bright colors, imagine if it was like bright pinks and purples and blues. And instead of blacks, it was whites and stuff like that. I feel like this is a really fun texture, which you're and just, a really fun style of paint on a guitar. What you're describing is like grand theft auto, but I feel like this paint job, it gives me like, uh, this is like a Chicago Blade Runner or something. Right, right. Well, this is this is like a city in the rain oil painting color yeah. scheme. You know, like uh, tail lights and street lights and dark glass buildings reflecting in puddles, sort of color scheme. I want that Miami Vice, uh, sort of like pastel kind of gritty thing going. On. Not gritty, but grid thing going on now that you mention that i'm holding the ipad in front of my face <laughs> now that you mentioned the paint job and like the the layering because my first thought wasn't that sort of thing i know what you're talking about my first thought is that this was some kind of like square roller no like some kind of roller pattern but it's just so precise that i don't think it could be that i think it's a, a, a panel of some sort of pattern that they were pressing into the body and using it to stencil uh, th there's a lot to criticize here. Uh, like painting the neck, the back of the neck is nonsense. Sure. I mean, it, 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 it completes the, the look that they were going for here. But even the insanity that they painted the back of the neck, but had the forethought 
to be like, you know what? Let's paint the back of the neck, but leave the skunk stripe. But we're gonna tape over the stripe. Like that's a choice. It's but why? Like I don't know. There's no reason to do it that way. But they did make choices here. And honestly, like the colors aren't. I don't like them, but they're not technically ugly. They technically work in a way that reminds me of things. I mean, we have, we're not even talking about the guitar itself, the bass itself. Yeah. You I know, okay, you know what these colors are? What? Uh, they are. Also, not, get that get that stripper sticker out of here. They're '90s animated X Men, but if that was show was set in the RoboCop universe, uh, yeah, totally. Like yeah. that. This is the X Men color scheme, but it's super dark. Yeah, it's like the it's like the 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 DC the Batman version. So I don't care about this base at all. I think it was overpriced. It's a junk base. It looks like a, he mentioned some brand for the the headstock shape. Like that could be a Hondo, for all we know. Well, Saga is just a kit. Like that's oh, okay. a kit that you can buy off of like Amazon or something. Like I'm getting Hondo slash Rondo yeah. vibes. I was getting ro- uh, Rogue, Rogue by Squire. Uh, har- like the, the like '90s harmony sort of mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like it could be any variety of bases that you should be able to buy for forty five dollars at your local pawn shop. Like this uh, also only has you know forty percent of a pick guard on it. <laughs> it's yeah, but it's got two hundred percent of pickups. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about that pickup placement? What do you think about a uh, P base uh, pickup in the bridge like that? Because usually There's, you'll say like a, a JP, right? Where you see yeah. the, the jazz P, PJ. Pick, PJ, where you PJ. see the, the jazz pickup in the bridge and then a, yeah. a P bass pickups in the mid. Um, This configuration, there's been a few like well-known bass players that have used it, but it, it's definitely not common. I don't think I've ever played a bass with this configuration. Do you think there's no switching? It's just volume and tone. So it's all pickups on all the time. It does appear that way, yes. Huh. Choices were made. <laughs> I just, I want to reverse engineer this this finishing technique and figure out how this was done. Right. Like, there's elements of it was like, yeah, if this was different colors, I'd, I'd be stoked. But it would need to have, like, some sort of, like, it'd need to have a full pick guard to make it all work somehow. I, I could keep thinking, like, that if I stare at this finish long enough, that some kind of, like, for lack of a better word, like some kind of mathematical explanation will appear, right? You know what I mean? You know, sure, sometimes sure. like you just stare at a, at like something, like a drawing or well, something if you, long if enough. If you cross your eyes, you'll see a dolphin. Not like that, but, it's, <laughs> but kind of like that. Like sure. if you see it and then you realize like, oh, all of the squares are yellow on this part. And then over here, they're all this, but some of them are yellow squares with whatever the paint underneath is then other ones the the outline of the square is whatever's underneath right it's just yellow like it's almost like this there's a strip i'm looking at the back this is what at home can't see this but if you're looking at the back it actually looks like this one was sprayed yellow and then flipped over and pressed into like this section. Well, see what I think is what I, I think there's multiple layers of things happening here. So imagine you sprayed the guitar blotches of yellow and yeah. red and blue, yeah. and then you put down the grid and now you spray black through the grid. Now the interiors of those of the grid is black and it's left those outlines. And then you start spraying blotches of the solid color of the yellows and the blues through the grid. And now you're having solid mm-hmm. blues and yellows mm-hmm. and red. So, so this layering and mixturing yeah. of, of doing the same thing over and over again, like layer, I, I might, I'm going to have to make a trip to home Depot to try to reverse engineer this. the one part. That's the most confusing. What to guitar me, am I going to do this to? Uh, the part that's <laughs> the most confusing to me is this little part on the belly cut. Well, imagine how hard it must be to get the, oh, yeah, the grid yeah. in there if you're working with a plastic grid. Like no, I'm sure. I wonder if, like, I'm imagining that the, the, the diffuser, like I was talking about, what if this was, like, a, a plastic mesh, like, fence grid? You know, like, that orange plastic mesh, like, chicken wire mm, mm-hmm, alternative mm-hmm. that you can get, like, at the hardware stores? Maybe it was that. Yeah, I don't know. That would work. You should refinish either the... The, the 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 Timu guitar. Eat Peach. I was going to say the Eat Peach or the Timu. Uh, I kind of like the Eat Peach 
as it is. The, right. That's the the James Hetfield uh, style knockoff bad cat. Uh, that 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 video blew up like two months ago randomly out of nowhere. Yeah, you got about fifty consecutive comments that just say this isn't made anymore. Why why are you showing me this video? I can't buy it. Yeah. I don't know, dude. It's like a three year old. Why video. did you decide to watch a video that's three years old? That was wild. <sighs> Ryan. Yeah. I feel like this was a wild episode. We, well, we had that. We had the piano guitar. We had the modded duo Sonic. Um, I think the modded duo Sonic excites me the most. So I'm going to pick that. What are you picking, Steve? The piano one's interesting to look at, but I think we, we talked pretty enthusiastically about this ugly bass, even though we didn't really care about the bass at all. We cared about the finish. Thousand dollars, dual sonics out. I'm going for the P base. Get that wheel. I'm gonna let you spin it this time. All right, I'm gonna spin that wheel. Wheel of what's that song go? I don't even want to win anymore because I know it's not possible. Of what is the uh, from Animaniacs? I don't know how the song goes. Turn, turn, wheel of lessons. Is that what it is? Wheel of Lessons? Turn, turn, turn. <gasps> oh, shoot. I Ryan, won. you won. Finally. Congratulations. The streak is broken. Confirmed. Ryan hates Snarky. <laughs> Sorry, Snarky. Congratulations to Dave Mod Sonic and the Dave Santander. Yeah. I don't know why I called him the Do Dave we want Santander. to save those pedals to give away, or do we want to make them an option for Adventure Clubbers? Uh, well, I thought we were going to, uh, these ones. Yeah. The one that th th these mojo hand pedals. Oh, I don't know. That's a, that's a real big prize. That's a big prize. Should we save them for something else? I think let's okay. Save them for something. All else. right. But we're going to do the affordable board pedals as, 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 uh, an option. Yeah, did you, did you put together a bin for me? I haven't, but we can do it at the end of the night. All here. right. Yeah. Um, we're going to play this song. This song was sent by Stephen Dixon. And, and a song. This is a great episode. Uh, it says, one of my favorite songs I've done. Let's make a note. I wonder if people want to know when the the note for the song, like the, the chapter mark for the song, so they know when the episode's over or so they can skip straight to it. I don't know. One of my favorite songs I've done. Hope you can at least tolerate it. It's called Mizumono. It's from Stephen Dixon. the glass I can't believe how much time has passed when you die I want you to turn me your cemetery beautiful in your black dress you look incredible you know I wanna but gotta stick Through Sunday 
It's a wild trip of a song. Yeah, it was fun. Went a lot of weird places that I like. I don't have anything else to say. Thanks again, <laughs> Peace Music Shop. I, I catnip smells kind of good. I I like the smell of that. Am I a cat? <laughs> Bye, everybody. Stay grounded. I'm supposed to say stay grounded. Say it then. Stay grounded. <laughs>